All right, and Waziru, let's talk about that, the uh, abductions or what um, the gentleman they are speaking is calling enforced disappearances, uh, that is um, Irungu Houghton. Why is this being used uh, to deal with people that would appear critical of the government? Uh, we do not condone abductions. Neither does the Constitution allow either abductions or enforced disappearances or even torture. We have a very, very vibrant Constitution mm -hmm. and the government has no capacity to roll back constitutional guarantees. It has no legal capacity to do so. What uh, perhaps uh, uh, needs to be perhaps addressed going forward is um, a little more transparency on how police officers, law enforcement officers um, uh, make a decision on arrests and how that arrest should be um, uh, executed. And we are working on a policy framework which will be uh, introducing in Parliament mm. to provide a framework. The same way, for example, the Director of Public Prosecutions has developed guidelines on how he arrives at a decision to charge someone. We have been in talks under the auspices of the National Council on Administrative Justice, which is chaired by uh, the Honorable Chief Justice, mm -hmm. uh, whereby we want to come up with a policy uh, rule-based guidelines on how we arrive at a decision to arrest someone and the procedures. Right now, the policy framework is, uh, is not present. Uh, that is uh, what we want to do. In Sorry, the, but even if forward. the policy guidelines are not existent, there is a constitution of Kenya enacted in 2010. That's what I started with, and I say that the constitutional framework does not allow any of the things you have mentioned. So Extra why judicial. would... Killings, police officers actions. be abducting people, holding them without communication, only to be released later, starved, weak. From where we sit, the people who have been uh, put in custody have been put on, uh, in custody through arrests. Mm -hmm. And if any uh, person alleges that... Uh, so there has been no abductions, according to you? No. So those people that were taken by police officers in the night taken to different police stations? You can be arrested any time of the day, of the night, depending on the nature of crime you are committing. If you are, for example, planning, and I'm not saying in this case, I'm just giving hypothetically, if you are planning a terror attack, we don't wait for sunrise to arrest you. We'll arrest you at the earliest opportunity and in the manner that is commensurate with the kind of um, danger you're posing to the public. So what if you've so, been speaking on X or social media? And it depends on what you're saying. Maybe you're inciting um, anarchy. You're inciting uh, people to desecrate uh, the emblems of uh, our national sovereignty. So how should such a person be arrested, Waziri? In, any manner, in, in the fastest way possible, and perhaps in a manner that uh, uh, prevents uh, harm to the public. Do you have a right to inform that you're being arrested? You have a right to be informed where you're arrested. Why are they not being informed? Who has not been informed? There are people that have been abducted. Yeah, we need to Shadrach know. Shadrach Kiprop, Shad. Yeah. Gabriel Oguda. Yeah. They were never in, in, informed why they were being arrested. Say so. And nobody communicated to Who's their lawyers say, say or even so. their... The lead of minority at the National Assembly, yeah, okay, I and I raised the question. No, those are political statements. Sorry, let me if, you may call it political. Let me just raise the question. Raise the question on the floor of the House, and said that he could not find his assistant. And the lead of majority was tasked to get in touch with the Inspector General to find out where this gentleman was. Eventually, he was found in Kajado. Had not been allowed to communicate with a lawyer or even fam family members. Some two things. One, depending on the threat that you pose to the society, you can be arrested in different ways. Mm -hmm. Number two, if your rights have been violated, 
in the process of arrest, detention, or uh, part, you know, in, the, in, in law enforcement, in the law enforcement space, you have a right to redress. It's as simple as that. Let's not complicate the matter. And, and you know, so is there, it's easy for is, is me to say... Is there a right to go to petition, or you are assured of it by the Constitution even before your arrest? I have not used the word petition. I said, said if, if your rights are infringed, yes. and in which case uh, we will not rely on uh, one side of the story. Mm -hmm. We want to hear the story of the person being arrested mm -hmm. and the story of the, the arresting officer. That's why you have judicial systems. So any person whose rights have been uh, violated have a right to redress, and uh, I think uh, it's as simple as that. I will read your statement, just an example of a statement from the Chief Justice herself um, and the President of the Supreme Court, um, which is where people would go to seek justice, that is, at the judiciary. And it, she was saying that um, our transformative constitution mandates that law enforcement operates with, uh, strictly within the confines of the Bill of Rights and the law. And Article 49 specifies the rights of arrested persons, including the right to be informed of the reason for the arrest, to communicate with an advocate and others whose assistance is necessary and to be presented before a court as soon as reasonably possible, but no later than 24 hours after the arrest. Some of these people, they have not even been taken to court. Nobody can be held for more than 24 hours lawfully without being taken to court mm -hmm. unless the offences for which they are being investigated fall within the Prevention of Terrorism Act which allows the police to hold uh, suspects for as long as uh, it's necessary. Is that what was happening in this case? I have not said so. You're the one who said so. I haven't said so. so they were held so for more than 24 pass, hours. So it's simple, Sam. If yeah. somebody has been held in custody for more than 24 hours, yep. what they should do is to go to the nearest court and apply for orders called habeas corpus which mm -hmm. is an order to produce the body of a missing person. Mm -hmm. That is first, first year law. So what is the responsibility on the side of the Interior Ministry, but also the police Our service? responsibility is to ensure, first, that the country is safe and secure. Criminals don't uh, run roughshod on citizens mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. That uh, whatever disputes, including political disputes, are processed in an orderly manner. And that if there are breaches, within the law enforcement space, those breaches should be redressed. And if anybody doesn't trust, for example, the police, we have a oversight uh, accountability mechanisms, including IPOA, including Kenya National Commission for Human Rights, which is a government body. And therefore, there are those who may feel aggrieved are not short of options. And for us, we don't want to venture into political discussions about uh, hypothetical cases. Mm -hmm. We want to deal with real cases, and we have no capacity anyway whatsoever to frustrate the Constitution. And if we are tempted, the courts are there. Okay. It's as simple as so that. Let's talk about real cases, because you call those ones hypothetical. Never mind they are real. Um, how many people are in custody, as you speak? We have, uh, at the moment, um, 1,009. 1,000. And nine. Would you know which counties? Yes, I have a breakdown of all the counties. I'm not just speaking figures. I and can send them to you. They're numerous. Pl please do. Including what they did. Yeah. What they, are, they are, what they are being investigated for. I have all the details. I can send it to you. Have they been presented to court? Many of them have been presented to court. And those that have not been presented uh, will be presented uh, within 24 hours. From when? So from the people we have arrested from, from the time the process started until now is 1,009. Okay? Are they still in Many of them have been released, including the 185 that were released uh, yesterday by courts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're a professor of law, and Article 37 is the one that talks about uh, the freedom um, of picketing or to really uh, petition uh, state agencies on what concerns that people may have. What do you think should happen when people want to express themselves in the manner they have? Because even when the first demonstrations happened, which was on the 18th of June, 
they were extremely peaceful. 